Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Talos of Tech Live on YouTube. It's been a while, hasn't it? It feels like it's been a minute. I, maybe it's just a lot has happened since the last time I've seen you guys. But um, in case you're new here, because I do think over the last couple of videos we posted, we've got some new people, new subscribers and stuff. I'm just sending out the reminder. Sorry for all you regulars who know this. But um, I love doing live content because I get to engage with you guys in real time. We pick a title in thumbnail and, you know, a topic to kind of kick off the live stream um, because it, it's always good to have something to start with. But I'm okay if we talk about other things. We can divulge away from the topic in the live stream title and thumbnail. But the main one I wanted to talk about was actually some news that I figured would be good to talk about live because I want to get your guys' real-time reaction to it. But Shrimp Apple Pro, who was uh, spot on with the Apple Watch Series 7 rumors last year, very few people were spot on with Apple Watch Series 7 rumors, but he was one of the few guys that was actually coming forward and saying, no, it's not a squared off design. In fact, it's a little bit rounder and the display is a bit bigger. Um, he's now coming forward and saying that in terms of the standard Apple Watch Series 8, uh, the design is basically not going to change much at all. They'll probably still brand it with some kind of S8 chip, but even that is rumored to not be that much different from the S7 chip. It's just kind of iterative, slight package rearranging, but not like any kind of enhanced cores or substantially better battery life and that kind of thing. And this is separate, for the record, keep in mind, this is separate from the Apple Watch Pro. There's still a lot of talk and there's still a lot of discussion around a higher-end Apple Watch that may have a more flat glass front, but um, Mark Gurman has said that it won't be the squared-off edge design. So the reason I wanted to bring that up is, is frankly, in, in the tech community space uh, on the subject of accountability. Um, I'm very much like... I've been doing this for a while. I have some experience in following leaks and following rumors, and I'm, and I'm not trying to say that I've gotten everything right either, but there was a lot of people that were basically just convinced that because there were so many reports and because there were so many rumors about a squared-off Apple Watch coming out uh, and the fact that we didn't get one is because Apple scrapped it. It must have existed because so many... Uh, reporters and so many analysts were all talking about it at the same time. That means there must have been one and just something went wrong with mass production at the last second. So they really quickly scrambled together the Apple Watch Series 7 and just happened to make the display a little bit bigger. And that's why we got the watch we did. And there were a lot of channels I remember watching saying that, well, there was a last minute hold up in production next year, though. That's when Apple will do the squared off Series 8. That's when Apple will do the double sided chip die in the Apple Watch and we'll get an actual CPU upgrade and that'll be the real Apple Watch upgrade that we really wanted. So a lot of people were writing off all of the false information, all of the false leaks, all of the false rumors is saying, well, they were just, they were, they were so accurate. They were a year ahead of their time. You know, they're, they're actually going to be right next year. Now here we are. We're potentially like less than a month away from uh, Apple Watch Series 8 launch and iPhone 14 launch, and, and we're heading right into iPhone season in full force. And uh, basically all the rumors have shifted again to, oh, actually, it's not that different. Eh, the chip isn't that much better. Eh, the design is basically the same. So that's what I'm just trying to double down on is no, the, all those previous reports, all of those previous leaks were not really leaks. They were, they were fabricated. They were not real. Um, I don't know who fabricated them. I don't know <laughs> um, who believed them, but they did not end up coming true. And uh, ultimately, that's what matters, whether or not it was some internal project. If, if people were leaking it and claiming this is what the watch is going to look like, they were speaking too soon and they didn't know what they were talking about. Um, so at this point, yeah, I'm, I'm convinced that the squared off Apple Watch was completely just a tech community hype thing that was not really ever in existence. Um, and the fact that now we're getting reports from fairly reputable sources saying that the Apple Watch Series 8 is essentially going to look identical to the Series 7 says, I think, a lot about how Apple appreciates that design. They like that look. They, they think it looks cleaner that way. Um, they likely think it looks more comfortable. And uh, f to be completely honest, I agree with them. I think the, the Series 7 design is fantastic. That's why I'm happy to still be rocking it. I was not really sure if I wanted the squared off Apple watch last year, I was like, yeah, I guess it would kind of match the iPhone a bit, but I like my series six and I like the red. Um, but then once the actual series seven came out and I saw that it was like the thinnest bezels on any Apple product ever, I was just like, Oh, 
well, if that's what it looks like, then I'm totally into it now. <laughs> it was like, yeah, now I kind of really want one. So um, the design surpassed my expectations. I thought it ended up looking better um, than I expected, but that's just me. And obviously a lot of people didn't uh, follow that. So I think that Apple intentionally designed the Series 7 the way they did, and the tech community was getting all hyped and excited for nothing, essentially. <laughs> getting hyped for something that didn't exist. But I, I hate to be the guy who say who says, I told you so. Ah, who am I kidding? It's kind of fun. But I definitely mentioned that whenever Apple does a screen upgrade, they rarely change it again the following year, at least within the same price bracket. The Apple Watch Pro is kind of its own new category, and I don't think will be necessarily considered by a ton of people just for the sake of its price. You know, Apple's experimenting, I think, with the Pro Apple Watch this year, that they're going to re likely replace the Apple Watch Edition line, and they're just essentially trying to find a find a way to justify people spending nine hundred to a thousand dollars on a watch but I, I don't really compare that as a follow-up to the series seven because that's a whole different price sector and that's not what most watches uh people buy are so um i would square apple, apple watch chris norton says what are we talking about we're, we're kicking off this live stream with discussion about the series seven design and the fact that I kind of predicted that once Apple updated the display, I count that as a redesign, just because the Series 4, most people say, is a redesign, and the biggest change with that was just the display improvements and the size increase, which is what the Series 7 got, and whenever that happens, you rarely get another redesign the following year, so I, I think that the Apple Watch Series 8, logically, it makes sense that it's going to be very similar to the 7, because in my mind, the 7 was a redesign. I know a lot of people fight me on that, but I, I'll, I'll disagree. I'll say as far as Apple Watches go, if you don't count the Series 7 as a redesign, I don't know what you do count. Like, then in that case, there's only been one redesign, and even that would be a stretch, because the Series 4 does look different than the Series 3, but I would say the Series 7 still looks different from the 6, anyway. Um, Apple didn't update a design that they just introduced a year ago. Never seen that before. <laughs> yeah, well, that was my whole prediction. That's what I kept saying uh, last year. And there were all these people disagreeing with me saying, no, Drew, they're going to do the squared off watch with the eight, the, the series eights. That's when they're going to do it. And now all the rumors have shifted again to that. Eh, no, no, they're not. They're not doing it this year either. Um, so <laughs> it's like. It's just funny to argue with people about that only for time to kind of prove me right over time. Um, telephone background says, always thought that Siri even flat scrapped rumor was BS. Oh, Siri 7. Yeah, you're probably, that's what you meant to say. I do think it's quite likely the Pro will have a flat screen but not a flat body. That's what I'm feeling more like now because there there has been a lot of talk about a, a more durable model with a more flat glass pane, but not so much about the chassis itself being squared off. So that's my that's my prediction, is that it's going to be a flat front but still a, a curved body. Um, anything the tech community comes up with is bound to be horrible, like the Apple logo being a fingerprint scan. <laughs> I remember a lot of people wanted that to happen, yeah. Loner Boy also liked the Series 7 design. Awesome. Thank you. I'm not alone. Marnjell says, as I look at the renders of the squared off Apple Watch more and more, I grow to dislike it. Thank you. It's not just me, okay? I I thought it looked kind of cool before until I saw the Series 7. And then I was like, you know what? I think I prefer that look. Um, wife and I still stick with our Series 6 until probably Series 9 or 10, unless they do like a longer screen and some sort of Apple cuff. Apple cuff? That would be interesting. What, like a gauntlet? You gotta have like a Thanos Apple Watch gauntlet. <laughs> Um, what happened to the airsoft guns you used to have hanging on your wall eight years ago? My God, what an old question. I don't know. They're probably, I think they were either sold or they were put in storage or something. I have no idea what happened to them. I don't have them anymore. They're not in this house. Uh, I probably gave them to somebody. They probably gave them to some younger kid that could actually utilize them or something. Um, People who talk about how the Apple Watch needs one week battery life don't understand that if the battery is higher, the CPU would be significantly worse. There isn't a magical unused space in the watch. No, that's a, that's an excellent point because it gets talked about every year and f people seem to forget that like it, it's not, yeah, like you said, there's not some magic 
empty space of air that they're leaving in the watch and they could just make the battery bigger. If you make the battery bigger, it's going to take up more space in the watch, which leaves less space for the silicon or less space for the speaker, less space for all the things that the Apple Watch sells great for. And all the other smartwatches that last a week on a charge, they don't have giant batteries in them. They're not like way bigger batteries than the Apple Watch has. Um, they they were literally just uh, very, very slow, very, very low performance CPUs, which impacted the performance of the chip. It makes installing software updates more painstaking. It makes the display less responsive. It makes it age worse. Um, you, something's got to give. I, I know people ask for it every year. They're like, why don't they just make the battery life better? It's like, you got to take away something at this point. Um, do you want the graphics to be worse? Do you want the speaker to be worse? Do you want the water resistance to be worse? Um, you got to pick something. And I never see people vote for something like, I wish they would make this worse in, so they could increase the battery. Um, no, they just say it just should magically get the battery life better. But I'm hoping the Apple Watch Pro at least can start to address that because... Apple must look at some of the consumer polls or, or, you know, ask people, ask Apple Watch owners, like, what, what they want more of out of their watch, what could be better. Um, because from what I can see, whenever we talk about Apple Watch features, the top requested, the, the top of the list every single time of what feature should get more attention, um, what, what would you like to see improved every single year's battery life. Everyone just keeps saying, please, better battery, better battery, make it a better battery. That's all anyone wants to talk about. And basically, similar to the iPad, the Apple Watch has retained its exact same battery life since the beginning. Like, they, they said the original would have 18 hours, and now even today, the Series 7 still says 18 hours. So maybe the Apple Watch Pro can change that trajectory by being larger it's just going to be a bigger watch in general, and I think there's been some rumors that I've read that have said it's going to increase the battery capacity, but I'm not sure how much it might be. It's I don't think it's going to be night and day difference. It's probably going to be like, okay, the old Apple Watch lasts 18 hours, the new one lasts 20 or 24 hours or something, um, that kind of thing, which, you know, 18 hours for me easily translates to about two days uh, depending on how you use your watch, that imp that impacts your battery life a lot. I don't have the always-on display, so that saves some juice. Um, but I think there's a decent chance that, like, Apple Watch Pro could extend that a little bit, but not not in a massive way. Uh, could see the Apple Watch Pro looking like the old iPad 2. Flat piece, of, flat piece of glass that sits on top, really rounded, tapered body. Yeah, maybe maybe not as rounded as the iPad 2. I, I would picture it more like... Uh, uh, a thicker version of the iPod Touch chassis or the iPhone 5C, you know, like you said, flat glass and then rounded on the bottom, something like that. Uh, I think the Apple Watch Pro and the $1,000 price tag is crazy and shouldn't happen, but sounds like it is. Thoughts? Uh, I don't, I don't know if I would say it shouldn't happen. Um, I don't, I don't fully expect it to be super popular, obviously, like, Honestly, the, the pro iPhones, they sell pretty well, even compared to the regular iPhones. Like, those, that iPhone lineup can coexist with itself. Like, the, the iPhone 13 has not killed the market of the 13 Pro. There's still a lot of people willing to buy the pro iPhones, even though the regular 13 is really good. Um, I don't know if it will quite be that same ratio of success where you have... Like, if, you've, if you look up most charts of, like, top-selling phones globally in the world, you typically get, like, at the top iPhone 13 or iPhone 12, and then just below that you get iPhone 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max. So they're, like, obviously the cheaper iPhone sells a bit better, but the Pro is still selling pretty good. I don't think it'll be at quite that level of success with the Apple Watch Pro. However... I will admit that doing a pro Apple Watch with a different design and perhaps a bigger display or better durability or a better battery life, that is probably a much better idea than the Apple Watch Edition. So I'd like to hear your thoughts, Blake. Like, do you think, if you had to choose one, if you if you had to choose, I, I, I know it's easy for you to just say, ah, there shouldn't be a thousand dollar watches, period, whatever. Um, oh, wow, Marjol's been a member for 13 months. Thank you. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Well, thank you, Marjol. That's very kind of you. Thank you for your support. But um, I want to hear Blake's thoughts on that because Blake's saying they shouldn't do one. But if you had to pick between Apple Watch Pro and Apple Watch Edition, which would you think makes more sense? The exact same watch as the aluminum, except it's just made of a nicer material? Or uh, Apple Watch that actually has features 
at a higher price instead of just a change in material. Like, you're right. It may not be the best idea in the world, and I could totally see a lot of people not opting for it because it's just way too expensive. But if Apple is trying to lean more into, you know, the enthusiasts and the Apple sheep of the world that really, really like um, uh, buying Apple hardware, you're probably going to convince more of them to splurge. Because right now we have varying prices Apple Watch, right? Like even with the Series 7, if we ignore the SE and the Series 3, we should... You should always be ignoring the Series 3, for the record. But, okay, let's just talk about the Series 7. It, like, starts at $300, $400. Uh, no, not $300, sorry. $400, $500, depending on the size you get, um, for the aluminum version. And then you can, if you like the steel, like I got, you got to pay, like, $700, $800. And if you like titanium, you got to pay, like, $900 to $1,000. So it's really just dependent on what material you like and whatever material you like, that impacts your price. That's not really how any other Apple product works. Like with MacBooks, you get more features the more money you spend. Typically, you know, you got to ignore the 13-inch MacBook Pro for a second. But, you know, like closed box, simple situation. The M1 MacBook Air is pretty great. Good performance, whatever. Go with the M2 MacBook Air, you get the MagSafe. You get the better webcam. You get the better... Uh, I ran out of features. That was quick. You get the high impedance headphone jack. You get the updated design. You get the bigger display. You know, you you pay more money and you get a more interesting product with more features. Um, and the Apple Watch is still just differentiating in in look. It's just it's just the finish you choose. Whereas um, even iPads, which you know I don't speak too fondly of, but it's like okay, you got your iPad Air, but then if you're willing to spend more for the Pro, you get your Face ID, you get your ProMotion, you get some extra cameras, you get stuff like that. So it justifies uh, the extra cost. Um, so I think because Apple's had success with the MacBook line and the iPad line and the iPhone line with the Pro series, it makes sense in my view to. If you're gonna do a higher priced watch, you should probably do a little bit more than just its nicer materials. Like give it give it some display upgrades, give it some battery upgrades, or you don't have a camera to fall back on, so maybe they'll get, maybe they'll have a new health sensor or something. Um, oh, Ray, Randy's rating the stream. <laughs> yeah, I was actually watching Randy's live stream right before this one. Randy just joined, and we got Ryan Halami's coming from Randy's stream. I'm sorry. Normally, uh, if I had more time in the day, I would have just stayed on Randy's stream and not live streamed myself. But I, I'm kind of working within limited windows because of all the stuff we have going on today. So I'm like, uh, it's Tuesday. I haven't streamed in a while. I got a live stream today, but Randy's streaming. So I was like, oh, gosh. So I delayed my live stream as much as I could to make room for Randy's stream. But at a certain point, I was just like, nah, I just, I, now I'm just avoiding work. <laughs> but either way, I wanted to do a live stream on this subject because I knew it would be kind of interesting. Um, Blake says, that's a good thought. The Pro Watch would be a better idea than the SE. Uh, I don't know what you mean by SE. I meant the addition. But um, better for the money instead of cutting features. No, I think that SE's fine. <laughs> I wouldn't cut features per se, but... No, I, I, most people, if they ask me, like, I'm thinking about getting an Apple Watch, which one should I get? I usually tell them the SE, just because I think that the vast majority of consumers probably aren't going to care or appreciate those health sensors, um, or they're always on display. At least the people I've talked to, if you don't currently have an Apple Watch, and then you get the SE, everyone I've recommended the SE to has been like, yeah, it's great, I love it, it's fine, it, you know, like... I don't know anybody. I, I don't know anybody that got the SE off my recommendation. It was like, Drew, I hate this. I should have spent more money on it. Most people are like, oh, yeah. yeah, it's fine. It works. It's good. Um, pro over SE. No, why did Blake? Where did you hear me say Pro over SE? <laughs> That's not what I said. <laughs> oh God, are you trying to bug me? Okay, Jacob Super Chat. It says the Apple Watch Edition is the wearable version of a Lincoln being a rebadged re Ford. The exact same thing in a luxury trim. Yeah, you you you're onto something there. That's a good analogy, Jacob. I, I think I'd have to agree. Um, it's just badging, whereas coming up with a vehicle or coming up with something that actually does uh, more than the than the cheaper version. That's what makes the big difference. No, I. If you have to ask, the answer is always SE. Yes, thank you, Quentin. If you're on the fence, you should probably get an SE because if you're the type of person that wants or appreciates. Um, the Series 7, there's 
there's no debate to be had. You don't need you don't need to be asking. You know what you want, and you're gonna get it. So I I always kind of answer things in that way. Like I know for a fact some people out there really really want the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro because they love the touch bar and they love the old tapered design. Okay, I know those people exist, but I'm still comfortable going on YouTube or going on a live stream or making a video and just saying no one should buy that. I'm comfortable saying that because I know that if anybody asks about that MacBook Pro, they shouldn't be buying it. If, if you're on the fence about it, then no. <laughs> but I understand that there are still going to be people buying it, but they're just not going to be the people asking for my opinion. If you're buying the 13-inch MacBook Pro, you clearly don't care what I think. So why would I make a recommendation to those people? You know, it's the same kind of it's the same kind of market um, competition within the Talos of cinematic universe. Yeah, exactly. I know. I hate you know, like especially just because I enjoy watching Randy's live streams. I hate to go live because now I'm like, well, I literally have the tab open uh, right now. It's oh, it's playing because I guess Randy stopped streaming. I, I had the tab open at the end. I was like, maybe if Randy's still live by the time this stream is over we can raid him but i think he beat me to it randy beat me to the raid <laughs> no so i i don't i don't want you to misconstrue my words blake i don't think the pro is a better idea than the se the se is a great idea and i think most people should buy that one i don't know what the sales are for it though apple doesn't disclose that i'd be very curious to see how well the se is selling from my own anecdotal evidence, just from what I notice in the comments and from Twitter, it seems like a lot of people buy it. Feels like I know a lot of people that bought the SE, even in my personal life. I'm like, yeah, this friend got one, this one got one. But I, I don't have the concrete numbers. I want to know how many people are genuinely like, yeah, I want the Series 7. The SE's not cutting it for me. I, I don't know. Um, really hope for a boost in battery in the Pro workouts with always on display and cellular streaming with AirPods, etc. as a paint. Yeah, I know it can be. But again, you just got to, something's got to give. There's not extra space in the watch. Are you just saying they should make it bigger? They should make a huge one? Or are you saying they should cut down on the performance? They should make the performance worse? You know, because there are smartwatches that last like a week or sometimes two weeks, but they have, they have a loss on a lot of features. They miss out on a bunch of things. Um, Cheryl says, I have an SE. There you go. Don't stream over cellular, just download before you go out. There's plenty of storage. That's true. Apple Watches have probably way more storage than they need. I think mine has 32 gigs and I'm barely using like eight. Yeah, I would recommend downloading stuff to it if you can because cellular plans are over 100 bucks a year usually, which is not worth it. Um, do you think the Apple Watch Pro will have titanium like on higher-end watches? Probably based on the, the rumors discussing a rugged version that's more durable i was like okay like a glossy steel wouldn't necessarily be like more rugged um but german kept saying it would use like higher quality materials and if it's going to cost a lot it might as well be using higher quality materials um they already act uh what's his name ryan not nick ryan but the regular ryan says do you think introducing ltpo to the apple watch would extend the battery life they've are actually already have that um they've had that since the series 5 they introduced um, LTPO, it just ranges from like one Hertz to 60. It goes between 60 and one. So when you're on always on display mode, it goes down to one Hertz and it uses very little power. And then when you're using the Apple watch, normally it ranks up to 60. So they're basically already taking advantage of that feature. And that's the battery life we're getting out of it. Um, pro is supposed to be bigger, isn't it? 50 millimeter case over the 45. I think some people were doing the math wrong on that. I don't believe it's a 50 millimeter. Um, people were talking about the, uh, diagonal screen space and they said it's about 5% larger than the 45, which would not be 50 millimeters. It would probably be more like 47. Um, not as massive. Uh, SC is fine for the majority of people. I got a seven cellular just for nerd factor. That's right. We got to take into consideration the nerd factor. That's important. Um, I have the series five. Should I upgrade to the eight when it's out or get the seven at a cheaper price when the eight is out? Not sure. So yeah, well, the eight's not out yet. So I don't know exactly all the features it's going to be rocking, but at least from what we know right now, it sounds like the series eight is not going to be drastically different from the seven. It's going to be mostly just slight chip upgrade, Maybe a new health sensor. Maybe, you know, a Apple Watches always have these, like, weird minor little... It has a compass now! You know, they might do something like that where it's like, okay, it, 
I don't know, always on altimeter is already a thing. I was trying to think of something minor. Um, maybe body temperature sensor could make it to the Series 8, but German was even saying that wouldn't come to the regular watch. So, um, yeah, I guess I would... I I would personally think the Series 7 is likely going to be a better, a better deal. I know you love the Compass, but it, it's it's out. It's already out at this point, so that's that's not going to be it. But um, most Apple devices, including the watch, are getting close to their peaks where they aren't really more improvements that can be added. I agree, yeah. That's why I'm expanding into more non-Apple content on, on different channels. But uh, do you think the new SE will get an update this year? Most people are saying it will. There, there seems to be multiple reports... Um, collectively saying that the se will get like a slight cpu boost so not a redesign it'll still probably not have the always on display it'll look exactly the same it'll just have an s8 chip instead of an s5 which probably wouldn't result in too much of a performance difference but it it might allow you to charge faster se2 might get faster charging which some people could appreciate i could see um, Apple Watch is like one big feature a year and maybe one or two small things. Yeah, I think this is going to be potentially one of the very small ones. Um, those two-week battery watches are sport watches, not complete smart watches with a dedicated OS. Uh, I think the OnePlus watch c was considered smart, but it was missing some pretty obvious features. I don't think it was considered a sport watch. Like, it had a dedicated operating system. Um, but... I don't think it even had NFC, so you couldn't even like do mobile payments with it, which I use very frequently. So to me, that's like a very obvious missing feature. It's like, okay, your battery life's great, but uh, if you don't have basic things like NFC on your watch, then it's substantially less useful to me. Um, Margell says, if we get longer battery life, how about the same battery life, but give the watch 120 hertz? I feel like the watch is probably the only thing that won't get it for a very, very long time, just because... Watches don't have that much motion to them. iPads justified it with the stylus because people were drawing with the Apple Pencil, so you'd get lower latency. But iPhones were more of like a market competition thing. Like so many other smartphones already had 120 hertz, and it was just like kind of catching up to the promotion game that other Androids were already playing. The watch getting 120 hertz, as much as I would like it, and I would love to get an Apple Watch and have 120 hertz, just so I could say, like, yeah, my phone, my MacBook, and my watch, all my devices in the ecosystem are all on 120 hertz. I guess with the exception of the TV, but we could upgrade that potentially one day. Um, I really miss MST on Galaxy watches, honestly. That's right. I forgot they had that for a while. Didn't they stop even including that on the phones, too? I think they got rid of that. Drew got me into NFC watch payments when I grocery shop. Very much convenient. I know. It's so much faster. You just Especially when you're, like, picking up bags and stuff and you got a lot of things in your hand. You're just like, bunk. Um, do you care about that nothing Christmas tree phone? Not particularly. It's not coming to... It's like a double don't care. Like, <laughs> it's kind of interesting um, to watch unfold from like a tech perspective, but the phone itself, for one, it's an Android phone, so I don't have much use for it. For two, it's not launching in my country. So don't expect much coverage of it on this channel, I guess. Um, I just want a low power mode for watch that doesn't restrict it to only tell the time. I would be interested in that as well, and I know Mark Gurman has talked about that becoming a feature that might make its debut in the Pro Watch or the Series 8 or something, but I get the feeling that the more modes you unlock, like, oh, now it can do texting in power reserve mode, or now it can do notifications in power reserve mode. The more you do that, the more battery it's going to ultimately consume. So it's not as low power mode as it could be, I guess. So maybe that's the issue, but I hope there's a way to, you know, stretch it and just dumb it down to it like its most basic features. Um... I think the S20 series was the last Samsung phone series with MST. Well, I mean, it's sad that they got rid of it, but it was probably due to lack of use. I bet not that many people were using the feature anymore. Um, wonder what happened to the rumors about an iPhone SE with a 5.7-inch LCD and Touch ID and the power button. Inflation killed it, maybe? Was that rumored to come out this year? I thought that was rumored to come out next year. Yeah, because the SC3 came out this year. I'm... 
I, the rumors, I remember making a video on that. I think Ross Young was talking about them doing a, a cheaper redesigned SE. But um, I thought he said that was launching spring of 2023. I haven't heard about it recently, so maybe it's been scrapped. Or inf like you said, inflation might, might have killed it. But it's probably going to be dependent on the sales of the SE3. I get the feeling that the SE3 is not selling very well based on just how many of them are in stock and the fact that it's not much better than the last one and the price has got, got worse. The price went up a little bit. So there probably just wasn't a bunch of people running out to buy the new SE. Plus the, the last SE2 launched in 2020, which was before the mini iPhone. Um, oh, Tech God says it's coming 2024. I didn't, I didn't hear the 2024 part. I thought that was... Maybe it's in the in the pipeline. But hey, Michael, thank you for the uh, six months of support. Appreciate it. Um, I bet low power mode would just reduce the screen to always a one hurt. I'd be curious to see what the OS would look like if you did that. Like, is there a way to build the UI for watch OS to be at least like somewhat functional, even at one hurt? That would be that would be kind of fascinating. Um, I get more attention when paying with my watch, which I don't like, so I just use my phone instead. No one says anything. Really? That's interesting. It's not that way where I live. If I pay with my phone or the watch, I either get no reaction or all the reactions. I'll pay with my phone. If I'm in a rural area where there's less people paying with Apple Pay, they'll be like, whoa, you can pay with your phone? That's cool. And then if I do it with the watch, they're like, whoa, you can pay with your watch? Or I just pay with the phone or watch, and they're like, yep, th nothing, no reaction. I haven't been to a, I haven't figured out a place where they, they're shocked by the watch, but not by the phone. Usually if they're shocked by one, they're shocked by the other. It's not a, it's not a credit card, you know, it's not me handing them a piece of plastic or titanium for Apple card users. Um, if I have cellular on my watch seven, should I mirror my iPhone and watch? Why? Wait, what? What is Jay trying to ask? If I have cellular on my watch seven, should I mirror my iPhone and watch? Mirror. Mirror me. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm really trying to decipher that message, but I can't figure it out. Series 7 is the best watch, Michael. I agree. <laughs> um, I don't get how the 41mm Series 7 gets the keyboard, but the 44mm Series 6 doesn't. One of the few complaints I have with my Series 6. Yeah, I don't quite... I, I didn't get that either. Like, I use the... And thank you, Trash Teen, by the way. I'm glad you're happy with your Series 5. Um... I understand why they want to software limit the keyboard to certain size displays, but because I use the QWERTY keyboard on my Series 7 and it's very, very tiny. Like, I can make it work, but it's, like, just barely. This is, like, the smallest QWERTY keyboard I'm comfortable I'm com comfortable using. Um, this, is, this is very, very small. And I can swipe with it, and I do a lot of texting with it, and the predictive text that they added is very helpful in watchOS 9, so you can just tap the words directly above the keyboard. But I would not be really comfortable with any QWERTY keyboard smaller. So if they would have restricted it to the 45 millimeter, I would have understood. But the fact that they gave it to the 41, not the 44 is like, what? Like, how does that make sense? Um, yeah, I agree Full, for sure, makes no sense. That's, that's uh, what's it called? Not planned obsolescence, but that, that's a software lock. That's a software locking of features. Um, will you be buying the 14 Pro Max or the regular 14 Max for review next month? I I think, man, I should I should agree on that, huh? Probably the 14 Pro Max, just because like the 14 Max is interesting because it's new and different, but I I basically like. I know exactly what that phone has. Like, it's going to have basically the same cameras as this phone minus the telephoto and LiDAR. And it's going to have the same display with the same notch as this phone, but at 60 hertz. And it'll be lighter because it's aluminum instead of steel. Camera bump will probably be a little bit smaller than this phone, but I don't know. Um, maybe I'll run a poll or something, what people think would be more interesting to review but i'm i feel like i definitely want to get the 14 pro max just so i can look at the new eye hole design and see if i get used to it or how it interacts with content and plus it'll have newer cameras and i can experiment with those um but yeah not 
I don't know. The regular iPhone 14 is definitely not worth checking out to me just because it sounds incredibly similar to the 13. But maybe I'll get both. I don't know. If I'm reviewing them, might as well just try them out. But I'm not, I'm not keeping them. Uh, what is the next iPhone you have to you expect to receive a major body redesign that would be the redesign exactly and what would be the redesign exactly would we go back to curved edges or make the phone squared like samsung hmm well there's not much talk about the chassis being redesigned uh if i were guessing i think that kind of like uh an arc of poetry like we went to the original iphone had the rounded back and the flat glass front and then that merged into the iPhone 4 era with the squared off edge design and then that went to the rounded design with the iPhone 6 and we kind of kept that rounded chassis design all the way up till iPhone 11 and then after that we went back to squared off so if we're going back to squared off I feel like if we keep going backward we should probably just go to the original iPhone chassis design and have the rounded back with the flat front I'm not sure if there's an easy way to do that with steel and glass there might actually be a lot of uh, manufacturing advantages to going with a squared off design like this um, and maybe some durability advantages as well with ceramic shield so maybe they won't want to change it again um, for durability's sake this might be kind of a peak design um, we might be, what i'm trying to say is we might be stuck with this chassis design for longer than you may think um, we kept the rounded chassis with the iPhone 6, which was 2014, until the iPhone 11, which was 2019. So five years. Um, there was redesigns in between that. You know, obviously, iPhone 7 to iPhone 10, there was the most amount of changes ever. But the overall chassis look was the was the rounded edge, um, which they kept for a while. So I'm thinking maybe we won't see another chassis update until 2025, 2026, maybe. Um, the original iPhone is like holding a bar of soap. I don't know what kind of soap you're using, but the, <laughs> that's not what my soap looks like. Get the smaller 14 Pro and the 14 Max. Well, if I get the smaller 14 Pro, I just, I know I won't like it because I'm not a fan of that size. I got the 12 Pro back when that came out and I was like, yeah, no thanks. I know Mike is getting the regular 14 Pro, so we'll, we'll get someone's opinions on that iPhone and how big the camera bump is. Um, can we get a phone that is triangular prism? <laughs> God, I bet that would be a walk in the park for software development. Just a triangle. Um, let's see. In the Apple Watch app, it says mirror iPhone. I have cellular plan on watch, so would benefit going into watch app checking mirror my iPhone. I don't think it would hurt anything. I don't know how that feature works. I don't use cellular on the Apple Watch. So I guess I would say, yeah, mirror the iPhone. Go for it. Thank you for the super chat, Tragic Toast. He says, it's about time we get Final Cut Pro on the Apple Watch. Hey, you know, the Apple Watch got optimized battery charging and a calculator app and a weather app all before the iPad did. So at this, at this rate, it's probably, it's probably going to get Final Cut before, before the iPad. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be that surprised. You know, S8 chip's going to be so dang fast. You can load your ProRes content. You think the 14 will get titanium? I haven't seen anyone. No, I, I think it would just... Supply chains are, are already so complicated, and Apple's working with so many different suppliers and having to change suppliers at the last minute, and titanium's more expensive than steel. And the bigger problem with titanium is that it doesn't look that much different from aluminum, at least on Apple's electronics. So I would expect that if they, even if they did a titanium iPhone, it would cost a lot more to make and therefore they would charge more for it. And also it wouldn't look that different from the aluminum Apple watches. It would be pretty similar. So I think they intentionally choose that steel glossy look on the pros because they know that shiny glistening look just captures more sales. A lot, a lot of people can noticeably tell the difference. This is a, a more luxurious iPhone because it's glossy. And it looks terrible in daily use, but in the marketing pictures, it looks pretty great. But yeah, I hate, I hate it. I hate all these fingerprints that it collects and it always looks dirty. It's like you can try to clean it, but it'll immediately get dirty again or people put a case over it anyway. So it's all for nothing. So probably a similar situation with titanium. I know there were people claiming that there was going to be a titanium iPhone, but yeah, it's inflation is bad enough as is. I think there will be price hikes for the iPhone pros 
even even though they're not changing the finish and it'll still be steel, they're probably going to be a hundred bucks more a piece. Eleven hundred dollars for the fourteen Pro and twelve hundred dollars for the fourteen Pro Max. That's what I'm expecting. If it's not that, I'll be surprised. Uh, AJSR super chatted. He says, "Rip iPad Pro's value thanks to iPad OS crap." <laughs> You know, even before iPad OS 16, the resale value on I, my iPad Pro was not that great anyway. So, um, edit 8K ProRes video on a 41 millimeter display. Yes, that's the way it's meant to be. You're going to just tell Siri to edit for me. We're bringing iMovie to the Apple Watch. Honestly, every year they add stuff to the Apple Watch. I'm like, oh, that's clever. I didn't think of that. Like, the Apple Watch, the Watch OS team is very, very impressive. They, they come up with things that I couldn't think of, whereas... The iPad OS team won't do a single thing I think of. <laughs> like, everyone has this long list of feature requests for iPad OS. I wish I could do this. I wish I could do this. I wish I could do this. And basically, everything they ask for is already on Mac. It's very hard to, like, list me five things you want the iPad to do that isn't just borrowing something from Mac OS. It's honestly really challenging to come up with. Um, whereas with Watch OS, every year I'm like, hmm, what could they add? I don't know. They've kind of thought of everything and then a new watch os upgrade comes out and it's like oh i didn't think of that wow i didn't consider that oh that was smart that, that, that was clever like the software team on watch os is ahead of me whereas i feel like the ipad os team is way behind me um battery percentage is back with the latest yeah we did a video on it i think that was my last video um what's going to be the next big feature for the apple watch uh they're going to come up with a way for you to spend a thousand dollars on one instead of four hundred dollars <laughs> That's that's what the pro one is. Uh, Drew keeps making reference to this non-existent iPadOS team. Sorry, it's not a team. It's probably one intern on the iOS team. Have a calculator. iOS for iPad has always been bad. I remember the days where you could fit more icons on the home screen than an iPad per page. It always just has felt behind, but there were definitely years where it caught up more than it than others, more than it did now. Um, titanium is lighter than steel, but much more expensive, correct? Titanium is, is a fancy metal, but there's a reason we don't use it in phones very often. It's because it's pricey. Um, which also makes it harder to manufacture at scale. They gotta build a lot of these things. JCP asked, is Louise getting the Series 8? I'm pretty sure Apple, uh, Louise has absolutely no interest in upgrading any of her technology until, like, it, it starts breaking. And even then, she'll probably keep using it for a little longer. Like, the only reason she uses an iPhone SE right now is because Mint Mobile offered her one. Like, not a sponsor, not a brand deal or anything. They just said, hey, we appreciate the video you made about us. Have a gift. And I was like, do we need to talk about it? Do we need to do a video saying this is sponsored by Mint? And they were like, no, 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 it's just a gift. Like, there's no contract. There's no expectations. Just, just it's us saying thank you. Um, so that was a way they thanked us is they just sent us an SE. And we were like, oh, okay, cool. And... Before that SE showed up, my wife was using an iPhone 6, and it was terrible. Like, the battery was bad, the display was um, replaced by some... It wasn't replaced by Apple, and you could tell there were issues with the display and the way it was replaced. And we went to some... Sh I, I don't know who did... I wasn't with her. I think she got the screen replaced because her, like, dad dropped it or something, and then... Uh, he got he took it to a mall and they replaced the screen and so whoever at the mall replaced it there was little blotches of, of light on the screen and the battery was t crap and it would die before it hit zero percent and the home button was weird and you know she was she was holding on to it but no louise does not like upgrading her her tech um she likes to hold on to things as long as possible but she's also not using her watch all that often anyway because look who's sitting on my desk <laughs> The, the Steel Series 3, she still uh, left it on the charger, I guess hasn't needed it today. So a lot of, I guess that's how it is a lot of the time. She's just like, eh, I don't really need it right now, so she just doesn't put it on. So no, I don't think she's upgrading it. I still have the OnePlus 8. I don't, it's sitting somewhere. Uh, we might set it up for a family member that might, I think a, a family friend needs a new phone for... Um, the U.S. market and that kind of thing. So they might end up using the OnePlus. But anyway, Tragic Toast, thank you for the super chat. He says, I know they can't, pour, uh, they can't put more battery in the Apple Watch, but it needs it. I don't use the sleep tracking stuff because I have to charge my watch every night. Yeah, I, I understand. 
I understand you want it. I don't, I'm, I'm hesitant to use that word need just because the Apple Watch is selling incredibly well with the same battery life that it's had since day one. So obviously you you still use the watch. It would be lo- it would be nice if it lasted longer. It'd be nice if you could use the the sleep tracking stuff, but um, it's it, you're still you they you still bought one. They still got you. <laughs> they still got away with it eighteen hours, and they're right. Like if, if they if they are convinced that you can get by with less, and you buy it and you use it, then yeah, they're right. You can get by with less. It'd just be nice. But like you said, I know they can't put more battery. Okay, what's what's there to be what's there to be done if they can't put more in? I hope they figure out a way. I don't know how they can, but you know, with, there needs to be some breakthrough with the silicon. They need either a, a much more efficient processor or they got to find a way to reduce the size of the, the logic board on the inside or something. Maybe it's that dual-sided chip that was rumored years ago that they were convinced, oh, that was supposed to come out on the Series 7, but it didn't, so that means it's coming on the Series 8, and now it's not coming to the Series 8, so that must... Man, how many excuses can people come up with? (laughs) Um, iPad LCD displays are pretty good. Yes, they get destroyed in HDR by OLED, but in most other things, they match up pretty good for LCD, plus OLED burn-in on iPads would suck. Yeah, that's true. They're still working on doing OLED on iPads, but they're just trying to get the yields to the right amount. Um, I'm literally having my phone hanging on an edge right now, and so am I. I have a success with 16 gigs of storage and a cracked screen. Wow! RK, my goodness. You do, you are living on the edge. I hope you can figure it out. I hope you can replace that eventually. Um, imagine an iPad can turn into macOS when connected to a monitor, like a Mac Mini. That would be great! That would be a step in the right direction. I, I'm not saying it would be perfect, but that would, again, that w- could justify a lot more people buying iPad Pros if they could do that. Like, if you were suddenly like, okay, I can use this and it can software-wise do everything a Mac can, I can justify spending that kind of money. But charging $2,000 for iPads, $2,000 for iPads that can't do basic Mac function, whether it's uh final cut or logic or xcode or any of those things if, if it can't do those basic things then yeah why bother what do you think will be the next big feature for apple watch <sighs> this is a tough one i i feel like the most amount of things that the average consumer can use a smartwatch for the apple watch is basically figured out like I know there's some companies that have come up with uh, camera accessories, so you can use a camera on your Apple Watch, but, you know, it requires an additional app, and you kind of have to hold your wrist a very specific way for it to work, and the battery life is already not great on an Apple Watch. A camera is just going to make that even worse. So I don't really think a camera is needed or necessary um, or would justify the the compromise of battery life or the, the price, of course, would go up, and... Also, the camera on an Apple Watch has got to be worse than the camera on your phone. It's just limiting That's the size. It just can't handle a bigger sensor. So I think a big one that they've been talking about doing for years, so it, it's almost in like a nebulous state on whether or not it's possible, but uh, glucose monitoring that has been talked about for a very, very long time. And I do think that there's a lot of diabetics that would love a watch that could tell them they're... Uh, blood sugar levels without having to you know actually get a prick um that that would be a pretty major feature um i don't know when that's going to be ready i know that there's patents for it and i know apple's been trying to get it working for years but they still haven't got it quite down yet but it it feels almost like one of those things because i remember making a video about glucose monitoring like uh, because i have a very close family friend that's diabetic um that Honestly, uh, he actually uses an iPhone 6 still, and he's happy with it. Not a 6S, a 6. And he replaced the battery in it when the battery got bad, and he still uses it. And he's like, yeah, I'm happy. It works fine. So he inspired me. We talked about him on the podcast recently because he's just a a really interesting guy. He's an architect. He was an architect. He's retired now. But um, this guy actually worked on the Steve Jobs Theater, the elevator that kind of rotates down. He's the one who, like, designed... um, the rails and the the manufacturing so he he's a really cool guy to talk to but basically um he's diabetic and has to check his blood sugar and stuff and he was asking me back when the apple watch first came out like back in 2015 he was like is there a way that can measure blood sugar and i was like no i don't think so but i remember explaining to him that there's 
there's patents that say they're working on that kind of thing and that they're pursuing that type of development. Um, so I think that they want it to have glucose monitoring. They just have to figure out a way for it to, you know, reliably do it. So if they figure that out in the next five years, I could see that becoming extremely popular in the diabetic community, which is unfortunately a fairly, you know, it's a, it's a fairly large demographic. Um, Ben Rayner super chatted. He says the iPad OS team can make iPads for nothing. Oh, there you go. Good. iPad joke and a nothing joke combined. Impressive. Um, what do you think about 2022 iPad pro? I'm very curious to, you know, I'm, I'm basically not using my iPad at all right now. Like I occasionally we pulled it out to watch TV on it, but even when we did that, it only lasted a couple minutes and then I put it away. So I, I basically don't use my iPad anymore, but when the new iPad Pros come out this year, I do plan on reviewing them, and that will be likely an M2 chip. So I assume, obviously, that's going to have the stage manager features and the the uh, tech scaling and the external monitor support that the new iPad Pros got. Maybe more, because Apple likes to come up with software exclusives for certain hardware. There's a decent chance the M2 iPad Pro might have some iPadOS features that the M1 iPad Pros don't get. When that comes out, I, I think I'll try iPad again, see what I can get done with it, try to use it with an external monitor, um, and, and just see how it performs. But I'm really confused by all this reporting on MagSafe coming to the iPad. I'm just confused. Like, how the heck is MagSafe supposed to work? Like, I don't really get why you would add MacBook MagSafe to the iPad. It's a single-use port. Um I'd rather there just be two USB-C ports and you can use one for power and one for accessories. Just adding another port just for power when most people are going to be using it with a Magic Keyboard case. If you care about power and I.O., you're probably buying the Magic Keyboard case, which can charge the iPad through the smart connector anyway. So I'm interested. I'm very curious to see what the hardware team will do, but um, I'm I'm not like sold on it like oh this is Apple's chance to redeem themselves like no I've kind of given up and, and accepted that iPad OS is just not going to do what I wanted to and it's going to be a pretty big disappointment um but the hardware is always very impressive I've always been amazed by the iPad hardware and the iPad Pro for this year is going to be a big you know it'll be the best the iPad hardware has ever been so it'll just continue to make me depressed on what could have been um so I'll, I'll review ipads but um i don't plan on upgrading or keeping them that kind of thing uh let's see super chat from aj says but pretty excited for m2 ipad pro just to make the budget ipad having more value but excited for the m2 pro to make the budget ipad i think i understand what you're saying you're saying the iPad Pro gets better so that the budget iPad can also get better, but it's not going to cannibalize the Pro, I think. Maybe something like that. Um, I just use the iPad pretty much for streaming and airplay. Yeah, I feel like it's... My mother-in-law has an iPad as well. It's like it's it's good for very, very basic tasks. You know, it's like a, it's like a toy in a way. It's like it's bigger than the iPhone, and that's it. It's kind of just iPhone blown up. Don't like how certain channels are like revolutionary iPad feature when everything MagSafe would do to an iPad Pro can already be done. Actually, what uh, Model Y Mike, I think he's in the chat, Model Y Mike in the chat mentioned on the last tech podcast something interesting of like maybe MagSafe on the iPad is not about charging. Maybe it's the way MagSafe wallet works or, you know, MagSafe um, cases on the iPhone. Like Apple wants to make some kind of new magnetic standard for ipads because ipads are being used in so many different accessories now people are putting them as like um you know picture frames or people are using them for cash registers at stores and maybe they would use them for more if there was like a certified apple magsafe standard so it's not about charging it'll it'll still or maybe it will charge, but just through the smart connector. You know, maybe there will be a, a standard, and part of the standard is the the four pins on the or the three pins on the back, maybe soon to be four pins, will allow power and data transfer, and there will be like a solid standard that could work on multiple sized iPads. So it might not just be about charging. It, it might not be about adding a glass back, and it might not be about. Um, do I have an example? You know, the the MagSafe little pucks. 
it's not about bringing this ring to the iPad. It's about bringing like a, a new standard and that kind of thing. Um, the only thing I use my iPad Pro for is watching TV shows. Yeah, I bet that's a lot of people, to be honest. Um, install Windows 11 on an iPad, and that's it. I don't. Let's start with Mac OS and see how we feel. If we can get Mac OS, maybe we can get Windows, but that's still a stretch. Uh, I'm glad I'm not missing out on too much with the iPad than haven't owned one since my 2014 iPad Air became obsolete. Oof. I'm sorry. I hope it works. A MagSafe magnet so strong that Apple feels comfortable with you attaching it to the fridge. Ooh, that would be sweet. Um, a fridge with MagSafe support. IPa uh, MagSafe for iPad. Maybe that's what they're working on. You know, it's like a certification that applies to iPads, not iPhones. And it's just, just picture the MagSafe ring on your phone and it's just kind of blown up a bit more strong so it can handle iPad docking and that kind of stuff that kind of thing i have seen wrist cam for apple watch yes um i've talked with nikaias before um he's a i think he works for wrist cam uh is that what they're called or am i thinking of something else but basically yes i've seen multiple Im implementations of adding the camera to the apple watch and you know i think they do the best they possibly can with what they can do because they are a third party um some people really appreciate it it's it's like an app that lets you take pictures and there's like a video calling function but i think the problem is that because the apple watch isn't really designed to have a camera connected to it like it doesn't work through facetime so if you do video calling through the wrist cam it has to be through the wrist cam app so if you want to call someone they also have to have wrist cam which makes it a lot more niche it's not like you can just use facetime or use skype or whatever um, and it's like this, it's a separate band that connects and adds this bulky section with the camera. So you have to charge that because you can't deliver power from the watch. So now you got to charge your watch and the camera again, like th they did the best that they could with uh, being a third party. The fact that they're a third party means that they can't like cheat the certain limitations that watch OS has in it or the, the code that Apple puts in the watch. So there's only so much you can do with that, but, um, I still think that, like, if there was a ton of demand for it, Apple would probably do something about it. And the fact that they haven't done something about it means that there's probably not a lot of demand for it. But it's it's cool that a company can come up with that kind of tech. I'm not trying to dock the tech. Like, they, if you really want a camera on the Apple Watch, the wrist cam is the best way to do it. Um, that's <laughs> Apple's probably not going to do it. So if that's a if that's a selling point to you, that's it. It seems like really solid engineering, and it seems like probably the best possible accessory you could get for your apple watch but um i just i i don't know anybody that's done it personally uh my 2020 ipad pro sticks to the fridge really well well there you go maybe we're already close to magsafe um hhh says i think ipad pro 2022 chassis design may tell us what the iphone 16 is going to be like just like in the hindsight that 2018 pro is what the 12 looks like both two years apart yeah, I mean, I think the main reason they went squared off with the Apple uh, with the iPad was so that they could uh, make this Apple Pencil attach magnetically. I don't think it was because, like, this is the future of what all chassis design is going to end up looking like. I think it was mostly motivated by, by the Pencil. Um, just because Apple realized that that lightning Apple Pencil charging method was just dumb and that wasn't going to work and they needed to come up with something better. And uh, the flat edge design would allow them to slap it on the side, whereas not that curved design didn't really work. Um, my iPad with Smart Folio is strong enough to stick to my fridge. <laughs> it's dangerous, you guys. You're putting your iPads on your fridges. Jacob, thank you for the super chat. He says, cameras on Apple Watches lead to weird nostril shots. That's tr that's also true. It's not a great optimal angle for, like, if long talks. It really only looks good and normal if you hold it up like this. And you get really tired promise i promise if you hold your wrist like this for extended periods of times it gets really old and the battery life on the watch is not that great anyway um am i going to pre-order a foldable tomorrow i wasn't planning on it should i you know i think a couple times i've looked it up i was like oh the galaxy unpacked is coming up and then i look i was like i haven't really followed the leaks because i i genuinely just i don't watch that many tech videos in the first place but I, I started looking up leaks, and I was like, what's different? 
<laughs> I was literally looking up leak guides on Galaxy Z Fold 4 versus Z Fold 3, and I was struggling to find any differences. I was like, okay, the, the, the chip is better. What else did they do? Like, the display looks the same, the refresh rate's the same. I mean, the, the Z Fold 3 had really good hardware, but I just, I couldn't find, like, what what changed. I don't know. Maybe maybe I shouldn't because I'm just not uh, I'm not terribly interested in the hardware. So if I try to review it, I'm gonna leave out or I'm gonna miss pretty massive points. Yeah, I got I got a I reviewed the Z Fold two, uh, not last year but the year before. I used to review Android phones all the time. They just weren't really getting that much you know traffic and the comments weren't that positive they were just like oh you're an apple sheep who cares what you think so i was like okay if you got i'm only reviewing android phones for you guys i'm not really taking much pleasure in breaking my ecosystem and switching to green bubbles and trying to switch everything over and switch everything back and like it's it's kind of a big headache for my personal life but i was willing to put up with those headaches because i thought people wanted to watch them but once i started getting less and less reactions from them and i was getting more reactions just from talking about apple news i was like well Apple news is what I'm interested in. If that's what you guys want to watch, then that's what I'll do. I, I didn't just stop doing Android reviews for no reason. It was because I just wasn't getting much value out of it for from you guys or for me. Like, I wasn't enjoying it, and it didn't seem like the audience was enjoying it. So I was like, eh. If I do review an Android phone again, I want to do something different. I don't want to just test it for a couple weeks and then go back to my iPhone. I, I think that, I don't know when this will happen, but if I do try Android again... I want to like use it for an extended period. I want to use it for like many, many months, possibly years to see if I can really get comfortable with it and, and really get accustomed to it and find true advantages and try to get like really used to having an Android phone and then taking full advantage of what it's capable of. So I'm kind of waiting for like my perfect dream Android phone to come out and I, I'm watching, I'm browsing the Android market roughly and nothing really has excited me very much. The Pixel would probably be the closest because even even though I would be switching away from Apple, I'm still a big fan of software and hardware being designed by the same company. So if Pixel made a really solid phone with a great silicon and, you know, good display and good features and I see I've seen the Pixel seven leaks and I'm like, eh you know, I like the camera bump design, but I'm not very impressed with the tensor chip. So maybe if they start posting really good performance results on the tensor chip or um i would want to watch too and the apple watch wouldn't work so i'd want to find a good wear os watch that i could partner with it that a lot of people like so i, I would want to give it a fair shot instead of just testing it for a couple weeks um but i don't plan on doing that in the near term future that could be years from now uh or it could be never because i also think at the same time like my channel definitely is apple focused that's mostly what we talk about here and, you know, I, I thought that maybe it would be worth exploring Android and kind of reviewing more devices outside of Apple if Apple gets boring and people are not interested in what Apple's doing. But so far, a lot of people are still very interested in what Apple's doing, even for very, very minor things. Like, I thought the battery percentage coming back on iOS 16 is like a cool, you know, it's a little thing, but it's been something we've asked for for a long time. So... I thought, okay, this is kind of a nerdy story that's kind of exciting to me, so I want to talk about it. I want to get a video out on it because that's a big development. And the video, like, still gets a lot of attraction, or I don't think that the iPad 10th generation is particularly exciting. I mean, it's kind of cool that it would get a redesign with USB-C or Apple Pencil 2 support, perhaps, but, you know, those videos still do pretty well. Like, a lot of people still watch videos on very small, minor upgrades, um, so I'm like, well, as long as people are still interested in talking about Apple, that's mostly what I want to talk about. Reviewing Windows laptops or reviewing Android phones is going to cost more upfront investment from me, and it's going to break my currently very well-working ecosystem. It's going to be harder for me to do thumbnails. It's going to be harder for me to export videos because I even looked around. You know, I was I was curious about doing this whole kind of anti-Apple transition just for the sake of the channel's entertainment, like people would get a kick out of watching me use a bunch of non-Apple products. Um, and I was looking around, I was I was asking in our Discord, I was like, hey, what, what would be a good laptop for video editing? Because I travel a lot, so I want something that I can take with me. 
So I was like, what PC laptop would be good for video editing? And I looked at a couple and I was like, yeah, this, this isn't very good. Like the performance of it was not going to export as efficiently as my M1 Max was. The battery life wasn't going to be as good. The display wasn't going to be as nice. And it wasn't going to have airdrop the way I wanted. The port selection wasn't as nice. I like my Thunderbolt ports. Uh, I like my fast charging. And I really appreciate the battery life on this thing. And I love Final Cut. So it's like, yeah, I could. I could review those things. But, like, what am I going to get out of it? I'm probably just going to be like, yep, this isn't as good. I'm sticking with Apple. So I don't want to, like, blow a bunch of money and blow, like, thousands of dollars on tech that just slows me down and... On top of that, the audience isn't even that interested in it at the end of the day. If if the audience is all interested in Apple stuff and Apple software and Apple iPads and laptop upgrades and stuff, why would I invest a bunch of money in stuff that you guys aren't interested in watching? You know, like what? <laughs> that, that just seems like irresponsible on my part. And I don't want to take my job for granted. I want to listen to you guys and, and listen to what videos perform well, what people are interested in watching and act based on that. If you guys are interested in iPad updates, then I'm going to provide more iPad updates. If you're guys interested in talking about uh, iOS changes, then I'm going to talk about iOS changes that excite me. So, like, I'm not going to just suddenly blow a bunch of money on something that I don't think many of you guys are interested in because maybe someone else will, you know. So, eh. Like Michael said, to be frank, any Windows laptop won't be as good at editing because Apple Silicon Mac OS ProRes Final Cut optimization is unbeatable. Exactly. That was the conclusion I came to. No matter what PC I buy, it's not going to be as good as my MacBook Pro. So if I can see that already on paper, why spend all that money to find out the exact same thing? Um, so I, I don't feel as interested in trying out Windows, at least for an extended period, maybe for a short term. But... Um, the percentage should be just a number, not inside a battery. Yeah, it's basically what it is. But, uh, I would turn a fan on, but then the audio would be bad and everyone would complain about the audio. Because it's happened, no matter what I do, either I get sweaty and people say I'm sweaty, or I turn on the fan and people complain about the audio. But a lot of people are just watching, uh, listening to these as a podcast, or they're not really watching them. They just kind of turn them on and have them in the background. So I prioritize audio over my own comfort because I know that will be more enjoyable to the the fans <laughs> ironically um but yeah i know it's very hot it's very sweaty i normally would keep the fan on and leave the door open because that's how the ac gets in here but for audio reasons i'm not doing that um i know some of you won't mind the fan noise but marjol you don't speak for everyone I, i'm telling you I, every time I use the fan, people are like, hey, what's that? I can hear that. Is that the MacBook fans running? It's really loud. Once you've enjoyed M-Series, it's harder to buy a Windows laptop. Before, it felt like the Switch wasn't as bad because the gap wasn't as wide. Yeah, it's pretty wide now. I have to agree. It's, it's going to be pretty tricky. I would love them to come up with something. Like if Google made a Chromebook and Google started making like pro software, if they were like, we're going to design our own tensor chip for the Chromebook that's really powerful and we're going to design video editing software and that kind of thing. Like, I already have to use Google services a lot. I watch more YouTube than anything and Google pays me. That's that's my full-time job is, is YouTube. So if Google also was designing my, my phone software and hardware and my watch software hardware and my laptop, like... Google has the potential to compete with Apple's ecosystem. They don't because they seem to belly flop with everything. Like, oh, let's make our own silicon. <laughs> oh, that sucked. Oh, let's make our own hardware. <laughs> oh, that sucks. It's like, they're not very great at executing. They're really good at ideas, but they kill off things as quickly as they introduce them. So if Google picked up some like Apple level engineers and, and marketing people, and they really got something down, I think that Apple could make an ecosystem worthy of... Uh, apples but it would require really good execution and i just haven't seen that from google um simply sora thank you for the support he says i did legit greatly uh enjoy the one plus seven pro though yeah i did too i i remember that phone fondly it was good but i think a lot of people don't like one plus anymore anyway um maybe do what marquez does and live the two phone life i know much easier said than done it'd obviously get expensive I don't think that's like as genuine though, because if I can use my iPhone at any point, then like I'm not I'm not really fully experiencing the Android. Most people don't buy two phones, 
So if you're going everywhere with two phones and you're like, I'll use the iPhone for this and the Android for this, then you're not, you're not running into the same, you're, you're getting different battery life than someone else would get. You're getting different, um, camera options that someone else would get. You're getting different, uh, screen on time, different, like everything is different if you're using two phones, uh, because you don't have the iMessage, you don't have airdrop. Whereas, um, if you have an iPhone, you still have all those things. So you don't feel like you're missing out on anything by buying an Android. So anyway, I I don't really want to review a phone, two phones at the same time or use an iPhone and an Android at the same time. But um, I'm just going to keep making what people want to watch. That's ultimate. And that I'm interested in, you know, obviously you can make a lot of content that people want to watch that you don't want to make. But I'm perpetually looking for things that are interesting to me and interesting to you guys and i don't have a ton of proof that you'd be very interested in watching me use an android phone just because i've 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 done that i've reviewed android phones and i know how they perform uh, those videos perform and it's like yeah there's not that much interest in me trying it out um i live with the pixel 6 pro and iphone 10 and i like them both but use pixel for everyday stuff since I need Google things for school and iMessage is not a thing where I live. I know some people do it. I'm happy for you if you do, but I just, I'm confident saying that's not most people. Um, he only rocks the two phones together when he's not reviewing another phone. Well, I don't, I don't really want to, if I'm not reviewing it, that I, I think I tried that before. I think back when I bought the Nexus 6P, I tried having two phones and I found myself just using the iPhone for everything. And if I have, I don't like traveling with extra stuff. Like I want to have, I want to carry less things, not more. And if I carry an Android and an iPhone everywhere I go, I'm just going to use the iPhone all the time and just forget that the Android is there. Um, Pixel works, but the OS is sometimes cruddy. Yeah, that's that's kind of important. You got you got to use that to use the phone, so it's kind of crucial. Um, you're getting double the battery life. Yeah, I just don't think I would use it much. It would be kind of a waste of money. I don't think there would be a bunch of times where I'm like, this is an Android phone situation. It's like, no, I just grab my iPhone all the time. Um, watch you primarily for Apple stuff, which you're great at. Thank you, Arnov. I appreciate it. My company approved my request to work on a Mac. It came in the mail today, and I can't tell you how excited I am. Hey, congrats, Skylar. I'm glad they approved it. That's awesome. When is the new Apple Watch going to be unveiled? I'm predicting the release cycle will be uh, the event I think is going to be September 13th. It's typically always the second Tuesday of September, which means that um, the the launch cadence, hold me to this, I could be wrong, but this is how I think it'll work. On September 6th, Apple will announce the event, and the event will be at 10 a.m. on September 13th, and then pre-orders will start at 5 a.m. Pacific, September 16th, and then first deliveries will be September 23rd, and the embargo will lift on September 20th. That's when YouTubers will drop their review. Um, but that's like the S launch schedule that I'm predicting. I think we'll get the event invite on the 6th, and it'll be the event itself will be on the 13th. So the 13th is when I think the new Apple Watches will all be unveiled. Why can't we join the channel on mobile? Uh, you can. You just have to use the browser, not the app. You just tap the link in the description, and it'll forward you to uh, um, Safari. Uh, but you can do it on a desktop. You, Apple has some weird um, App Store stuff, so you can't can't do it through the app. It's Apple's fault. It's not Google's. Um, <laughs> do you plan on coming back on Viper's live streams anytime soon? Uh, I don't think I've been invited, but if he invites me, I'll try to make time for it. Uh, I'm I'm also very busy right now, so I'm not sure if I could make time for it at this point. But yeah, we. We catch up every couple of months, and so it's always a good time. Anyway, I got to get going, um, but I appreciate the Super Chats today and all the channel members. You guys are great. Um, I think, actually, do I have it ready? I think I do. Yes, so the live stream is ending, but I finally finished after several, several attempts at getting this video done. Um, I finally finished, and I just published my T-Mobile six months later review. So this whole live stream has been done on T-Mobile Home Internet. So I talk about my experience of uh, using the internet over the past six months. Yes, there's a skit. So if you like the skits, um, enjoy that one. Uh, but the live stream's gonna end now, but there's a new video, of, uh, link is in the chat. If you wanna check it out, you can watch a much less sweaty Drew in that video that just dropped. So thank you all for tuning in. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care, bye-bye.